In this video, I'm going to show you how to switch between Apache and Nginx web servers. So for example, if you have a website that's running on top of Apache right now, and you want to run an Nginx web server instead, then this is the tutorial for you. Um, if you want to go the other way from Nginx to Apache, then you can pretty much follow these same exact instructions, but just in the reverse order, swapping out Nginx for Apache. So let's go ahead and get on into it. I have this website, WordPress website, at tonys.cyou, and it is running Apache. Now, let me prove that to you. So I'm using Chrome, Google Chrome, and if I open up the um, dev tools here, and under the network tab, if I just refresh the page, I can click here and see under the response header that the server is Apache 2.4.38. Now, if you're not using Chrome or if, um, I don't know, you don't want to check it that way. There's another way that you can check it, and that is if you go to your WordPress admin dashboard, go to site health, info, server, and then under the web server section, you'll see Apache version 2.4.38. Okay, so by the end of this video, we'll uh, be running Nginx, and we'll come back in here and check, make sure that that is actually the case. So I'm going to assume that you have SSH access to your server. Uh, I do. I'm going to log in via SSH with SSH root at tonys.cyou, and that'll go ahead and log me in. Uh, and what we're going to do is look at the Apache configuration file for this website. So let's go to etc Apache 2 sites available. And in here, uh, I have two configuration files associated with this website. It might be different for you. They might be named something different, depending on if you're running WordPress or there's a lot of variables here, uh, but just find the relevant configuration files for your website. And this one deals with uh, just HTTP. And then I got a let's, encrypt, a let's Encrypt SSL certificate, which deals with the HTTPS version of the site. So uh, we're going to basically take these two and manually translate them to Nginx. So let's, let's actually see what we're working with here. So um, and again, I'm going to use the, the Vim text editor. Uh, feel free to use whatever text editor you are most comfortable with. So right now, uh, we uh, we can tell by looking at this that our website root is at var www wordpress. That's not going to change. Um, we're going to keep it there. And our domain name, tonys.cyou, and the www version of that. Uh, this is listening on port 80. We got some uh, security options here, same thing down here, and then this down here redirects uh, www and um, just HTTP requests to the HTTPS version of the website. So uh, let's take a look at that, and that's going to be the other configuration file in here. And similar, we're listening on port 443 this time for HTTPS. There's our server name, server alias, our document root, some logs. Um, and then the actual SSL certificate. So this, again, will be different for you. The, the, the configuration files might look different, but um, I'm just picking out the, the basic, most important parts that we're going to have to migrate over to Nginx. So these are here for reference if we need to look at them. What we're going to do next is install Nginx. And we can do that with apt install Nginx. And there's also a, another additional piece that we're going to need um, we have PHP installed on our system right now, but we need a PHP module that allows Nginx to talk to PHP, and that's called PHP-FPM. There's a couple different options here, but we're going to go with this one uh, today. So go ahead and install those couple packages. Hit Y and enter to continue, and that shouldn't take too long. Now, we're going to run into an issue here. Because Apache is running, we're not able to bring up Nginx because they share the same ports, port 80 and port 443, like, like we looked at. Uh, if you scroll up here, yeah, you can see failed to start the high-performance web server, blah, blah, blah. That's OK. The installation was successful. The, um, the server's not running yet. OK, we'll, we'll take care of that later. We have to shut down Apache and then bring up Nginx to do the actual transition, but there's a couple more configurations that we have to do before that point. So with Nginx installed at this point, let's go into the um, etc, Nginx directory, 
in here all the basic install you'll find we'll also similarly go into the sites available directory and right now we just have the default uh, configuration file for the default landing page uh, what we want to do is create our own configuration file for the WordPress website or if it's not a WordPress website it could be something different for you um, and and for for brevity for for simplicity I already stubbed out a uh, a template configuration file for Nginx here so let me just walk you through that real quick and this is where we start to see the parallels between Apache and Nginx so we're gonna listen on port 80 because this is HTTP and we're gonna start with a simple example here our, our root is at the same location, var www WordPress. Again, that doesn't change. Um, our index file is going to be index.php. That's the case for WordPress. It might be different for your website. And then the server name, those are domain names, uh, www version, non www version. And then this is where some of the specific Nginx syntax comes into the picture. So we have two location blocks. Um, this one, um, basic uh, HTML pages, this is how those are handled. Then we have PHP pages down here. Now, if you remember, I uh, mentioned the, the FPM package that we installed earlier for PHP. Uh, I just want you to make sure that this directory exists, this file exists on your system for the socket, the PHP socket. I have 7.3 installed. Uh, it could be 7.4, 7.0, 8.0 whoever knows whatever version's available at this time that you're watching. So just uh, make sure um, that that socket file exists and it does on my system. So uh, we're good to go. Now, um, this is a simple, like I said, a simple bare minimum HTTP version of an Nginx configuration file. Um, let's start to incorporate the SSL certificate because I promise that we'll we'll bring that over as well. So if we go back into the uh, WordPress configuration file, we're going to add um, some additional uh, um, uh, Nginx syntax down here. And uh, same thing as before, uh, I'll copy and paste these. Uh, based on my configuration, but it'll be different for you. So for the, the si similar to what Apache has, right, in the Apache configuration files, we're going to do the same thing uh, by listening on port 443 for Nginx in order to have an HTTPS website. So that's what these two lines do down here. And then the same exact path to the... Um, the certificate files are here. So we have the certificate itself and the key, which is the full chain.pem for me. Might be something different if you don't use uh, Let's Encrypt and the, the key down here. So one for one, copy these uh, keys and certificates from your Apache to Nginx configuration file. We'll take this a step further and we're going to have a single file for Nginx. We're not going to have uh, the two configuration files for HTTP and HTTPS like we did for Apache. Um, we're going to just add another server block down here and it's going to look something like this. So remember back in the Apache configuration file we were doing redirects from non-WWW and non-secure to the HTTPS version of the website. That's what these blocks do here. So if the host is a www host, then we permanent 301 redirect to HTTPS. Um, same thing down here. If we don't specify anything and it's just a non-secure connection, then we always want to go to the HTTPS version. Um, listening on port 80 for those, um, there's our server name, and then we have a 404 return down here. So basic configuration, your website might be more complex than this, but we're just going to keep it simple uh, for this example. So let's go ahead and save that. I think that's pretty much all we need for the Nginx configuration file. Let's test it out with Nginx-T and the test is successful, so that's a good sign. Um, in order to make this, uh, what's the right word, um, live, right? We need to sim link it from the site's available directory to the site's enabled directory. So we can do that with ln-s etc nginx sites available wordpress.conf 
And then we're going to uh, link that to the etc nginx sites enabled directory. So now that'll exist in there. And when we bring up nginx, it'll read all the configuration files in the sites enabled directory and make them live. So this is the point in the tutorial where we will be bringing down Apache and bringing up nginx. So let's go ahead and do that. And there will be some downtime here. So if we do system ctl stop Apache 2, uh, that's going to shut down the Apache server. And if we go back to our website, uh, this will be downtime for us. Now, if we do system ctl disable Apache 2, this is going to prevent Apache from automatically loading when the system starts up the next time there's a reboot for whatever reason. Now we can do system ctl start nginx and this time uh, nginx should come up successfully but let's confirm that with system ctl status nginx and you can see that it's active and running. One last thing if we want nginx to come up when the server reboots we can do system ctl enable nginx and you probably saw that maybe in the background uh, the website already came up, um, but just to confirm that, let's refresh the page here. And there we go. So we see that uh, that's live and running. So let's make sure that we are on the uh, Nginx web server. So we'll open up Chrome DevTools, refresh the page, look at the request header, and... The server is Nginx version 1.14.2. Very good. Let's go ahead and log into our WordPress admin dashboard. We will go to settings, oh, I'm sorry, tools, site health, info, server, and you'll also see that we're running Nginx version 1.14.2. So the one thing um, that I wanna make sure that we do is to clean up, all right, this is optional, but I think it's a good idea to clean up the Apache files if we're not gonna use Apache anymore. So we can do that with apt get purge dash dash auto remove Apache 2. Hit enter, uh, this'll free up about two kilobytes of space. And there we go, that should be it. Thank you guys for watching. Watch some more videos of mine over here and I will see you over there.